March 5th, 2024, City of Angels Camp City Council meeting. Uh, roll call, please, Rose. Mayor Herndon. Present. Vice Mayor Moncada is absent. Council Member Brolio. Present. Council Member Clemente. Present. Uh, Council Member Serrato. Present. Staff is present. Thank you. Pledge of Allegiance, please. Hi. I pledge, I pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United, United States, States of America and to the republic for which it stands. One nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay, our first item tonight is a proclamation. And this is for making the month of March the American Red Cross Month for 2024. Yeah. I'm going to turn on my microphone so everybody can hear me. Thank you, Rose. Um, so, um, I have a proclamation here, but we do have some guests from the Red Cross, and I'd like to invite you to come up and, and speak first before we read the proclamation, or do you want to jump right in? You, you, you want to read it first? Yeah. No. Perfect. Yeah. Okay, here goes. Um, so, the City of Angels proclamation. During American Red Cross, Red Cross Month in March, we recognize the compassion of people in Angels Camp and reaffirm our commitment to care for one another in times of crisis. This generous spirit is woven into the fabric of our community and advances the humanitarian legend, le legacy of American Red Cross founder Clara Barton, one of the most honored women in our country's history, with no doubtably, who no doubtably dedicated herself to alleviating suffering. Today, kind-hearted individuals in our community exemplify Barton's commitment as they step up through the Red Cross in the California Gold Country region to provide a beacon of hope for our neighbors in need. Through their voluntary and selfless contributions, they make a life-saving dif difference in people's darkest hours, whether it's delivering shelter, food, and comfort during disasters, providing critical blood donations for hospital patients, supporting military families, veterans, and caregivers through the unique challenges of service, saving lives with first aid, CPR, and other skills, or delivering aid and reconnecting loved ones separated by a global crisis. We hereby recognize this month of March in honor of all those who lead with their hearts to serve people in need, and we ask everyone to join in this commitment to strengthen our community. Now, therefore, I, Jennifer Herndon, Mayor of the City of Angels Camp, by virtue of the authority vested in me by the laws of the City of Angels Camp in California, do hereby proclaim March 2024 as Red Cross Month. I encourage all citizens of Angels Camp to reach out and support as humanitarian its humanitarian mission. In witness thereof, I have hereunto set my hand and caused the official seal of the City of Angels California to be affixed this fifth day of March in the year of 2024 and of Angels Camp, California. So we have this, we'd like a photo, right? Yes. So if we can all would you go. Please? Yeah, let them go ahead and speak really quick. Okay, perfect. And then thank we'll you. do the photo. Uh, thank you for this proclamation on behalf of the American Red Cross and for our global bond group here in Calaveras. Uh, our headquarters is out of Sacramento, and uh, we are a part of the Northern California Gold Country region. Our territory is Camador, Calaveras, and uh, Tuolumne. So we are a tri-county uh, uh, territory. Uh, a little bit about uh, our volunteers. Uh, first of all, we're always looking for volunteers, and there's always something that uh, anyone can do, even if you uh, remain at your, your home. We have jobs that range from responding to structure fires, uh, helping and assisting in shelters, all the way to uh, assisting those with their casework and getting them navigated through all paperwork um, and other forms of assistance. So these volunteers are, are relentless. Um, 
They're very dedicated. It's a very rewarding uh, experience. I've been doing it for about eight years now. I've had uh, a number of uh, responsibilities and I enjoy every moment of it. And I enjoy coming out and uh, meeting and greeting and talking about the Red Cross. Do you have anything you'd like to say? Yeah, I'd just like to, you know, I've been in um, about mm, 10 months now, but uh, I'm really enjoying what we're doing and it's, it's really a great cause. Like she said, we're, it's not just about blood, it's not just about going to hurricanes and a lot of local stuff and giving you a lot of the information so you can, you can share with everyone. Uh, and then, uh, yeah, reach out to us, um, redcross.org, and if you go to volunteer, you can go from there and navigate all kinds of stuff. And if you want to join or just have questions from there on, you can, you know, navigate wherever or get somebody to call you. And, but yeah, we're, we're hopeful to go right ahead. You can also contact the Red Cross through 1-800-RED-CROSS or um, the redcross.org. Yep. And, and uh, somebody will reach out to you. Absolutely. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you guys. Thank you. So I'll get a photo. Michelle's going to take the photo for you. Yes. Yes. Yeah. 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 Oh, are you going to be the short type? I'm standing in front of the podium. Oh, over here. Oh, 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 yeah. 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 Right there. Yeah. You want to stand in front of the podium? Okay. Where are you? I can do that easily. <laughs> there you go. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you for having us. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you, guys. You're welcome. Thank you all. Uh, yeah, definitely. Thank you so much. Thank you again. Thank you. Thank you. As I say, Jamie's wearing the right direction. I know. Yeah. Maybe we should have had you in the picture. Okay, thank you for that. Moving on. Um, item four is uh, approval of the agenda as posted or amended. Anybody have any concerns or changes to the agenda or staff? Any changes? <clears throat> any public comment about the agenda as it's being posted? Do we have anyone online with us tonight, Bruce? No, we do not. Okay. Uh, so seeing none, I'm looking for a motion for approval of the agenda. So moved. We have a motion. I'll second. And accept that. Great. Shemente? Aye. Rolio? Aye. Sherado? Aye. Herman? Aye. Thank you. Thank you. Item five is public comment. The public may address the city, uh, I'm sorry, the council on any of the public, of any item of public interest not otherwise on the agenda that is within the jurisdiction of the city. No action may be taken. Matters to be addressed may be referred to city staff or placed on a subsequent meeting agenda. Speakers would be limited to five minutes per person. Do we have anybody here that would like to speak during public comment? Seeing no one here and seeing nobody online, we will close public comment. Item six is our consent agenda. We do have items, uh, two items that are on our consent agenda. Any reason for anyone to pull either of those items? Any member of the public? Okay, seeing none, I'm looking for a motion to pass consent. So moved. Second. Good. Shimente? Aye. Brolio? Aye. Sherado? Aye. Hernan? Thank you. Regular agenda item seven. Um, our first item A is to approve resolution 24-23 which is support for Utica Water and Power Authority's Federal Energy Regulatory Commission conduit exemption application for the Utica P2019 and Angels P2699 permits and authorizing the City of Angels Mayor to sign a comment letter supporting the process. So we had Rose and we were going to have a Joel join us online, Correct. but I think he sent a presentation. Correct. Um, Maybe we can just kind of jump right into that, and then we're all going to just tackle this um, presentation and answer questions that might pop up. 
So this is the UWPA exemption application information that he provided. Um, you want me to read through it? Yeah, so if you don't mind. Um, so basically, uh, Utica Water and Power Authority op operates a 27 mile long water supply system that provides service to the city of Angels. Um, in that process, it operates two small hydraulic powerhouses, each operating under a FERC license. Um, those licenses are set to expire in uh, 2033. And so staff has uh, done a deep dive with, with a high level of, uh, of consultants to determine that one of the options, rather than re relicensing those, those licenses, which is quite costly, one of the options is to do a FERC uh, exemption application. So we've started that process. Um, the effort is kind of the timeline is what you see up there. There's a timeline of about a 90 day uh, period of, of comment, I think is what it's open right now called. So we're, we're during that process. And one of the things would be to request the city to support this and write the, the letter of support. Um, in the event that there is a FERC that we do exempt the the find success with the exemption process, um, the relicensing process would not it would it would go away, but we would be under local local governance. We would under state, state and local governance. So, um, let's see what else can we talk about. That cook controller I think is important. The city of Angels Calgary. Oh, the bullet or the no, keep going. Yeah, right. And the board of supervisors. Yeah, so Joel has presented, he just got the uh, UPUD up in Murphy's. He got their support last week. He's going to the Calaveras County Board of Supervisors next week, I believe. Um, large water contractors, business leaders, that's kind of this 90 day process that he's, we're in the middle of right now. And support letters are coming in to, um, to, to help bolster this effort. Um, Councilmember Sherado just went back to DC last week and she might want to speak to some success she had while she was there. So I had the opportunity to meet with <coughs> Senator Padilla's office, Senator Butler's office, and um, Congressman McClintock, uh, his staff, and he, I also got to meet with him. Um, we have um, McClintock's uh, letter of support, and then I met with the FERC uh, person in Padilla's office, and he said that he would uh, give us that letter of support after the comment period closed. So we will be following up with him and um, Senator Butler's office. I met with their FERC and water um, staff, and they also would uh, give us the letter of support. Yeah. And then the, the other high level is just that the costs that are associated with this exemption process um, are all almost the exact same costs that would be part of the relicensing that's due in 20, 2033 um, for those two those two permits. So um, this this idea is to reduce drastically reduce the future uh, the cost for the future of the city of Angels. Um, and I think we've kind of all had some some training on that or some some education on that. So um, this is just to kind of get that the support letter signed and uh, the 90 days is up March 25th, 23rd, 25th. Yeah. So um, it's a critical time. I think it's also important to note that um, when Joel met with the FERC staff, that um, if we were to build the hydro plants today, it would not fall under FERC, it would fall under state. Um, just being five megawatts. So that was a really important and key for both of the senator's offices to hear that. And um, yep. I think that was really the only mm -hmm. point. And a lot of the work that has gone in in the last four plus years for this uh, ex exemption, um, every instinct, every conversation, every meeting, we are the ideal candidate for an exemption, a FERC exemption, and not and not needing to go through the relicensing is is what we're being told. So. Everything's pointing to this direction, and and I'm I think we're all optimistic and excited, and uh, eager to eager to see the outcome of this. So, anybody mm -hmm. has any questions? I I just have some comments on the resolution once we get there. Okay. Um. Let's jump into that already. Yeah. 
I'm, I'm looking at it. What you got? Okay, so the, the last whereas, I mean, everything that I've learned, um, the whole purpose of our water system is, is the primary pur purpose is water conveyance. And I don't see that in our resolution. And just as uh, Caroline said, you know, had we, were we to build these today, you know, they would be automatically exempt. So I'm suggesting on the last whereas, you know, whereas, I would suggest language such as, whereas the primary purpose of this water system is for water conveyance, and whereas at water conveyance and if um, the power agency were to build the power plants today, they would be exempt or some language such as that in there. Um, so that it kind of supports what we're doing. I agree on the conveyance side. I don't know that we can put it in the resolution that um, that it would be. I mean, all things are pointing to if a new five megawatt or less uh, hydro is being built today, it would be governed under the state. But I don't know that we can necessarily I, I'm just speaking, I don't know, Caroline, if you want to add to that. I don't know that we could make that part of our resolution. I don't know the outcome. I don't know the process <clears throat> to build a new power, power plant. Kevin? I, just, I, mean, I, I would leave it, I would leave it for the most part alone. I understand what you're saying. But Stantec, who's the consultant, I'm sure, looked at, you know, this, this general, this general one, or because we didn't write this, did we? No, no right. this is so provided. I, I'm assuming this is provided. I actually to, think this is exactly what was signed by UPUD and the county. Right. I'm a, so I, I would just want to stay as close to everybody that I can, whether it's UPUD, whether it's county, whether it's business owners. I think yeah. this is just a general statement. And if you want to look at the, the overview, you can, but I would just leave it alone, not knowing what word it is in here that the, that the consultant is like. Uh, that's my only, that's my only I don't want to delay this, and I know that it's imperative that it gets to Utica by the March 25th date within the window. So I, I don't, I kind of agree with what Alvin said as far as I don't want to delay things, but you can always schedule a meeting with Joel. No, I, I, don't always, need, I, right, just I, don't, I don't need to schedule a meeting. I just, you know, I, the whole purpose, you know, during all of the, I, I don't know why those two things were left out of resolution. I'm fine with the way the resolution reads now, but I don't understand because those were the two salient points that were being made mm -hmm. in, in those presentations. So, Which was uh, the other one, Mike? What, the one was um, the, conveyance? The, the water, water, water conveyance. Water conveyance. Okay. But I, I'm, I'm so, fine with the way the resolution is. I just don't understand why those two points weren't in the resolution that, that, were, that were drafted. Because that was those were key points when we attended that training or that, that, that so the that. second whereas says the city of angels relies on uwpa's water command system for its sole raw water supply which city uses to provide residential commercial and agricultural services so it kind of does talk about it being our water supply it doesn't talk about the if a hydro was being built today Thing. And, and there were a lot of other big points that I brought with me into the senator's offices, and one of them was that we are a disadvantaged community. We don't, right. we don't touch on that here either. There's right. so many points, so I'm wondering if that, if this is what the consultants and um, Centec kind of came up with, saying these are the points that we think is going to make it get to where That's you fine. need it to go. That's fine. You know. Um, I mean, I had a laundry list of all the things I had to go through and make right. sure that I covered, which were all important and, and right. led to them saying, yes, we will give you the letter. So I see your point, too. Sure. And I do. It is a big one that mm -hmm. if it was built today, we wouldn't fall under that regulation. That's what we're being told. And <clears throat> do we have any public comment real quick? I'm going to reach out and make sure we've closed that chapter. Rose, still nobody online? Nobody online. Okay. Um, any other comments or questions from anybody else? I'll make a motion to approve. Okay, Rose, we have a motion. Second. And second. Shimente? Aye. Brolio? Aye. Sherado? Aye. Herman? Aye. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Slow down. Item Sorry. B is the Utica Park update. Amy. Mayor and council members, um, as you saw, they were out drilling and trenching. Uh, last we spoke, they are done. They finished up on the 22nd. 
and we will have our report approximately March 21st. Newsflash, they don't think it's sinking into the bottomless pit and that we will be able to proceed with the park okay. as planned, but we don't have that in right. writing just yet. So don't get too excited, but that, that's the word on that. Um, we canceled our last planning committee meeting. We had a conflict, but we will be holding one again on the 20th at noon here. We will also likely be having a special meeting either later this month or early next month because we are anticipating actually having a preliminary draft of where everything for sure will be located as soon as that geotechnical report is released. And that's pretty much it. I'd be happy to answer any questions. I have a question about the interpretive signs. Um, will people uh, be able to access then if they are, uh, if they cannot see, will they be, will there be Braille or, or will the, what do we call that? QR thing? Code. The Q, yeah, R code, will that, will, is that going to be um, audible? So if so, they download it? Yeah, so surprisingly, that's not why we thought of doing that, but it will have that benefit. We were looking to have some audible portions on on the QR code. So yeah, by, by accident, it would be accessible. Good. I, my, my questions are kind of about the dates. You're mentioning that the geotech report is due by the 20th, 21st, 21st of March. March. And then the next meeting is scheduled for the 20th. 20th. So, so on that date, we're not going to look at the layout. We'll be finalizing okay. the park course and looking at interpretive signs. Okay. On the 20th, you think that there would be a conceptual park layout? Um, sometimes. Right. They don't time. want to release it until the geotech is out. So it'll be sometime right after the 21st. Okay. We so will the look staff report says, Boyer anticipates having a conceptual park layout for full committee review on March 20th. Yeah, they That's they, they okay. did until this morning's meeting. Got that. Um, and still no ordering of the children's playground yet. Uh, the equipment, I'm sorry. No, they've been given the thumbs up to order it. And we in fact have a one-on-one -on -one meeting with them on Wednesday. So uh -huh. they're proceeding. Okay. Yeah. So yeah, spec, spec is the children's playground. So they're ordering it. <coughs> on them. Oh, oh, that's the next one. They're sorry. Full of here. Okay, sorry. I was reading too fast. Mm -hmm. um, okay, another question? <laughs> yeah, sorry. Uh, the brands, the monuments, dedications, relocations, are those when you give time frames when have to have those in or I'm, I'm missing it if I didn't see as soon as possible um because we are going to be looking at uh, the designs pretty quick and the manufacturing of those things uh the ordering for memorial trees will take a little bit longer oh, okay. but um yeah better better early than late to get on the list we we only have about three people so far so there's plenty of space space uh, okay. here. No. Have we done any additional outreach on the brand request or the monument request um, other than just these meetings and these newsletters? Our newsletter, which we have 176 people who receive it. Yep. The reason I ask is because I know the fairgrounds always does branding um, outreach and they might be somebody that you could reach out to and cool. see if they have a, a short list or a long list of uh, the cattle ranchers or the the brands that are likely to want to come out, or I'll go steal. They're all working. I'll go take a picture. Uh, the only other one too would be Young Farmers. Yeah. Okay. Good yeah. job. Yep. With Justice Cross, we those again. I don't think he's aged out yet. <laughs> <laughs> um, do we have any? Do you have public comment? Yeah. Okay. So you get to come on up to the podium. <laughs> you can get yourself. <laughs> so you got your so That's <laughs> okay. Come on. No. Okay. It's a little comment. I was just going to say that I agree the fairgrounds would have that list because they have that big podium at the out there with all the things yeah. on them. And like, you can use art, you know. So, really watch out, we'll put you on the committee. Yeah. 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 And we would talk to everybody about it. <laughs> Any other public comment? No, okay, seeing none. Um, if there's nobody else, I'll, we'll move on to items. 7C. <laughs> um, 7C 
is to approve resolution 2419 recommending to the city council re recommending to the city council adopting the mills act program for the city of angels establishing procedures for implementation and authorizing the city administrator to prepare all necessary agreements applications and supporting documents to implement the program Mayor and Council members, this is one I'm personally excited about. It's something I've wanted to do since I came here. Um, the Planning Commission has recommended approval. The Mills Act is one of the only really tangible incentive programs that uh, can actually reduce costs for preserving your building if it's historical. It reduces your property taxes. It's very much like um, the Williamson Act. In fact, it's it's fashioned after that. Um, nobody in the entire state who has this program has ever had a problem with a gigantic loss of property tax income from it. Tuolumne County has had theirs for 30 years. Um, I think they have about a dozen Mills Act contracts and it um, hasn't been a huge issue for them. And it's for anybody who doesn't understand it, um, I could go a little bit into the accounting principles Please don't ask me about the accounting principles, though. I hate that part. Um, basically, if you're on our register of cultural resources, you would qualify for the Mills Act. If you're already on the National Register, you would qualify for the Mills Act. And I'd be happy to answer any questions. Well, how many properties do you think will qualify? Uh, all of the downtown all, all conceivably downtown. qualify. Um, a few scattered properties could qualify. Um, the bare minimum is you have to be 50 years of age or older, okay. and then you have to have some sort of linkage to the history of the city or somehow tie yourself to that um, for importance to be on our local register. Um, next question is, what was the Planning Commission's vote on this? It was unanimous. It was unanimous. Um, and second, there's, uh, I'm in favor of this. I think that's a, it's a great incentive. There is some built-in checks and balances. Um, will city staff be involved in those annual inspections? And um, so it sounds like the business owner is going to work with the city, develop a plan, um, and then you use those funds that are realized from the state tax savings to help refurbish or maintain. Or refurbish, maintain. preserve, right. and in exchange, we have a healthy historic community right. that right. brings in additional right. sales tax, et cetera, et cetera. So city staff will be in? We will be involved. In fact, we've incorporated this into our vacant property owner notices. We wanted to give them a list of incentives that were available. Okay. So we okay. mentioned okay. that this is pending before you um, as an incentive to try to get some of those vacant properties to undertake some renovations. Yeah. And is this available for residential as well, or just commercial? It's available for residential or commercial. Mm -hmm. We generally receive a slightly higher tax reduction with the commercial. And it's my understanding that the the tax reduction, the factor, is provided by the state, the right? It's not just something. It, it no, provided. it's a no, it's a formula that's in state code, right? It's not something you have to worry about. Yeah. Does it fluctuate each year based on the yeah. CPI or well, something? Well, the, the assessor's office Does takes it. care of all yeah. that. Yeah. yeah. Um, so I actually spoke with the assessor, and she told me that they actually did the Mills Act about five years ago. Stopped doing it five years ago. In Calaveras County? In Calaveras County. And I was asking if any of those were city properties or if they were all county. She wasn't sure because she wasn't in her office. We have never adopted that program. So that's why it's possible for this <laughs> because it hadn't been adopted yet. That, that's so I'm just curious if we know like what what type of it, you know, you're saying reductions of range could range between 10 and 50 percent. And I'm just wondering if we could track down what that number was. There was a no, there will never be a number. It depends. It's a property by property determination. So it sounds like yeah, it, it's yeah. unique yeah. to the property. Um, and it sometimes is tied to how much renovation you've done and, and those types of things. That was my next question is renovation. And so I am surprised like... to hear that they stopped it because I spoke with Gabriel about it. And he said, he said they were actually looking into it, that they had never had it. 
I asked the assessor, and she told me they had never had it. So that was it. Was never adopted, but it oh, was oh, being it, wasn't a it was being done through state code, and then it stopped. Wow, that's interesting because state code usually requires you to adopt it locally before yeah. you can implement it. Huh. So you're wanting to start out with a, a limit of ten per year. I I put that in there because there's sometimes a concern about that about, oh, great, we're going to have this big run, we're going to lose all this no, property right. tax. I put that in there for your comfort level. Personally, don't think it needs to be there. Like I said, I've, I've worked on 12 counties. They're, they've had it for 30 years. It's, it's, it's not something that's going to destroy your property tax rate. Right. Just for clarity, so this is, it's for 10 years and you have to renew annually? It automatically renews. Okay. It doesn't once you do a non-renewal notice. Okay. I have to do it. And at the end of the 10 years, can you do it again? <laughs> no, no. So it's at running 10 years. It automatically. Oh, I see. Yeah. Yeah. Until yeah. you put a stop to it, 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 then you stop. it so takes you 10 it. years to get out, yeah. out of it. Just exactly. Just so right. Okay. Thanks. <laughs> Public comment. I see no public comment. I just have yeah, I just have one more question. Amy, um, since you informed the vacant property owners of this, has anybody has it sparked any interest of when this would be passed? And are they we have not heard back from them yet? We gave them a deadline of April first to get back to us. Okay. So I'm hoping. And if it doesn't, then they contact me and we'll be bringing it up again. Thank you. Any others? So I'd be looking for a motion to approve resolution. I'll make motion. motion. Second. Chris? Shemente? Aye. Brilliant? Aye. Sherado? Aye. Herman? Aye. Thank you. Thank you. Item <coughs> 7D, this is discussion regarding the City of Angels Camp Police Department Automated License Plate Reader ALR, I'm sorry, ALPR, Chief Ellis. Good evening, Mayor and Council. Um, here this evening to, to give uh, the Council and the public an opportunity to ask any questions that they may have regarding our automated license plate reader program. And I'm just going to read from my staff report. In June of 2023, Angels Camp City Council approved the fiscal year 23-24 budget. Included in the budget was the purchase of four Axon Fleet 3 in-car camera systems with ALPR for the Police Department. ALPR systems have become increasingly popular in municipalities across the country due to their ability to enhance public safety and aid law enforcement efforts. These systems can quickly identify stolen vehicles, stolen license plate vehicles associated with criminal activity, those with outstanding warrants or missing persons. While ALPR systems offer several potential benefits, there are also concerns regarding privacy and civil liberties. The collection and storage of license plate data raises questions about the extent of surveillance and the potential for misuse of this information. Furthermore, there are concerns about data security and the risk of unauthorized access to sensitive information because these concerns in, because these because of these concerns, industry right standardized policy will be adopted to address concerns. Um, no financial impact is already budgeted. And then I attached our department policy regarding our use of automated license plate readers and all the requirements and training and things that go along with our management of the system. And with that, I just open that up to council, I guess, first for if anybody has any questions regarding this. Yeah. <laughs> so um, I have two questions. Maybe. Um, first question is, you guys are only going to store that information for just a year. I mean, I, I don't, I didn't understand that part. Why it's why it's not kept in perpetuity. Well, it's not. I, I guess it's just there's. I, it would fall under the Public Records Act, and that would be a requirement for um, the length that we need to store it. There's not a long term. I mean, it's hard to say there would be a long term need investigatively. Um, to store that information over a year, but then you're talking about data storage and all that kind of stuff that over years you start compiling and getting a bigger, larger, right. larger, larger file and where do you store all this information at? So, and help me understand kind of the nuts and bolts. Um, 
if my truck passes by one of these readers, it reads my license plate and then... So these are installed in the fleet vehicles. Okay. So they have th actually three cameras in them. There's a forward-facing camera that cuts you, as you've seen on cops and all the TV shows, like the officer as he approaches a vehicle or whatever um, during a traffic stop. There's also a, a, the ALPR reader, and then there's also a camera that um, focuses in the back seat of the patrol vehicle. So as we're driving down the road, if we have a bad guy in the back, we can actually see what they're doing um, in the car. It also records audio, so record you know evidentiary purposes. It's got good. Um, evidentiary purposes for that too because a lot of times when we're driving down the road the person decides that they want to tell us a story about something and um, otherwise we wouldn't have that information other than just our own statement regarding it. Yeah. So as the patrol vehicles are driving down the road this camera is actually scanning left and right and probably about a, a 140 degree field of view as you're driving down the road and picking up license plate, it's got software in it that can identify a license plate and then it actually runs that license plate. So for vehicles that have been entered into the statewide systems as stolen vehicles, you know, if you somebody for your license plate has been entered, so we know and a lot of times that's associated with a stolen vehicle as well. Wanted persons, uh, missing persons, at risk persons. Um, so that's the information, that, that's the hit that we would get um, would be based on it reading that information, sending it to the system, and then sending it back to us saying, hey, this vehicle was involved in this incident or so, somehow associated with this incident. Is that instantaneous? Is it fast? It's pretty fast. Um, so we've done some testing on it, and we've actually gotten a couple local hits. Um, but when we go... You know, ding, 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 we get the little bells and whistles going off telling us to be a hit. We look around and He's we don't, we don't see the comes up with a picture. You get a picture of the vehicle in the license plate. Um, so, I mean, it's pretty, you got to be on your toes. And as soon as that bell goes off looking, and you got to orient yourself too to where was it a parked car on the side of the road? Or was it a vehicle traveling in the opposite direction? Or is it a vehicle at an intersection, you know, getting ready to go in a, in a different direction? So it's, it's not super um, simple, but it gives us a clue that, hey, something's close. Let's go, let's go see if we can find it. Um, but yeah, I mean, that, that's basically the, the nuts and bolts of it. It does collect all that data. So if, say, you know, tonight something happened and we get a license plate later on um, in an area, we can enter that license plate into the system and it'll tell us if we picked up in one of our vehicles that has the system if we picked up that vehicle and where that location was you know it gives you coordinates latin long um and then plus a photograph of where it was where it was parked at um so yeah that that would that's definitely a benefit for after you know criminal investigations you, you know you're now you're driving on scene where a crime occurred you didn't realize that the suspect vehicle was on scene until Maybe you, you get the point later, now you run it in the system, go, oh, look, it was there. Now we've got the suspect on this at the scene of the crime or whatever. So it's got some definite um, evidentiary value um, in many, many, many ways for us. Great. Interesting. And that's not a whole fleet, that's four, ve four vehicles um, that we have outfitted with. That's what we started with for this fiscal year um, to see how it goes and hopefully, hopefully we can add one or two more in the coming years. Um, so for me, I don't know how I feel about this. I'm kind of pulling. Um, I mean, I've gotten the hide, why should I really care? But there is a sentence in here, an AL, ALPR may be used in conjunction with any routine patrol operation or criminal investigation. Reasonable su 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 suspicion or probable cause is not required before using ALPR. I don't know. It feels really big brothery to me, if that makes sense. But if you guys are responding to a call and you are code four with your lights on, I think it should be rolling. Um, if you're there's an amber alert and somebody, you know, maybe through Calaveras County, turn it on. But I don't know. I have a real tough time with is not required that that one the probable cause is not required when you're, you're checking out but like i said if, if you have nothing to hide why should you care to but so part of this is too for me as the system administrator is there's an audit trail as well 
So if you who haven't done anything wrong, you know, all of a sudden feel like you're being targeted or something by right. a certain officer, because it would have to be an individual officer that was out to get somebody or, or whatever. I could go back in, run an audit track and trail, see that he did enter your license plate into the system to see if it was ran. And then now I can get, now I got a whole bunch of questions that I got to go asking as to why this is occurring. <laughs> so there is some um, checks and balances for sure. Um, and, and you know, the, the policy lays that out um, decently. And, and, and that's the concerns. I mean, that, that's obviously some of the public concerns is what is this being used for? And I can tell you that, you know, being that we're a small department, small city, um, it's easier for me to keep track of uh, officers and then, you know, running an audit, tra audit trail if I want to. You know, we're partnered, Axon is partnered with a company called Flock Safety, who's all over the United States um, with ALPR systems. And I'm familiarizing myself with their software and, and how to use it, but there's a definite, you know, way for me to audit anything that's been ran. And, and you have to put in a reason too. You can't just, you know, put a license plate and they have to manually type in a reason why they're looking for this license plate as well. So they got to justify their actions as to why they're running any license plate. Oh, so they do. So the probable cause not required is not. If so, if, well, probable cause is a, is a you know, reasonable suspicion, probable cause, you know, you start elevating the, the reasoning, reasoning for it. you've got to have justification, whether it's whether it's probable cause, reasonable suspicion, curiosity, or whatever, just because, you know, if somebody's running your license plate through the system, why? Right. What's the purpose? So you can't and it needs to be a justified purpose, or they're going to have me coming down on them, asking them a whole lot of questions. It could turn into, you know, a much bigger investigation. So if you're sitting next to Cal Fire there, just watching traffic, and you don't have this on. You're not monitoring for vehicle registration or yeah. or, 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 or arrest or stolen vehicles or you're not you're not collecting data at that time or are you off no it is you it's, it's, so what is it collecting data it's collecting it's collecting data and it's just telling you if there's a hit or not they're not running they're at that point they're not into the system where they can actually start checking for life i've got to give them an account in order to even do that and i haven't even decided whether i'm going to do that or whether it's just going to be in one of the sergeants that have access. So if one of the officers wants us access, that they have to run it through us. Um, so like I said, there's a lot of checks and balances. There's two systems. There's the Axon, which is the hard, which is the hardware and the computer that's gathering the information. Then there's Flock Safety that's bringing all that and it's yeah. running it through Flock Safety yeah. through the, that. That's where the search engine is at, is in Flock Safety, not on their car computer. So they can't even check it in their car computers right now because nobody has access. So then, one of those alerts won't come up saying. No, the alert—they'll they'll get the alerts. They'll get the, alert. they'll get the alerts. They just can't manually yeah. look yeah. for vehicles or okay. enter anything mm -hmm. to search anybody's vehicle. Anything that they get an alert on is something that's been entered by another agency. Okay, I mean that's helpful too for other agencies and federal agencies if they're looking on the lookout for somebody or a silver alert or something like that too. Yeah. Where um, you know you're you're you you can only do so much with. Have however many officers you have out there and I get that. I know that one of the main things that the feedback that we got on the survey from our community was safety. That was a big piece of it. And so, I mean, we have such a small department and tools like this definitely help you to be able to, you know, um, broaden how you can do with that safety component. Yeah. So I, I definitely understand that um, need for that too. Well, I can I can give you just a, a little example. I was er, last year Greenhorn Creek had some achings and stuff like that going on. We went in to check the area. As, as I was pulling into the area, there was a vehicle leaving. It was a white truck. Later, that may have been our suspects. I could have entered into the system, see what that license plate was of that vehicle to find out if that was in fact our suspect then we could have you know gone after and look looked at and dug into a little bit more um about it. otherwise we have a white truck with this system we now have a way to go back and go hey i remember at this location at this time when i was here there was this vehicle i wonder if that's the vehicle that was involved and then they can go back through and, and check the times and the dates 
and maybe find that vehicle that was involved in something. But it's capturing the license plate every time. If, if it's it's got, but if, yeah, it's, it's trying to, yeah, it's trying to. And then it's, just, you know, it's, it's got, I mean, I, I'd be happy to show you guys if you ever want to come by the police department and, and I can show you how the system works, but um, it puts a green bar around the license plate and then it magnifies it for us as well so we can get the license plate um, in front of, especially if you have a hit, what you should be doing next is then running it through the DOJ system to confirm it to make sure that it's a valid um, mm -hmm. Ballot hit. We were not looking for like parking tickets. No, 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 no. I think that's what it, the clarity yeah. for the community is that we're not out there like, hey, you're a month late on your registration. We're going to get you. No. Yeah. So this is really that's not my for that's stolen not my vehicles, missing persons, active criminal behavior, criminal, yeah. criminal investigation. Okay. That's the only intent that I have for use of this at this, at this time. I don't know what other agencies are doing. I know I've read some stuff that they there there was some parking type no. enforcement stuff that the other agencies were using, but that's not that's not our intent for our intent is just to use it as a tool to help us catch bad guys. Okay. My sense is it probably happens more than we even realize. Oh, for sure. You know, you go to a four-way stop, there's a camera. You know, you go across a bridge now, and they're, I mean, so, um, and if this is a tool that you believe is going to benefit your department, then, you know, I, I think it needs to be supported. Well, here's a, here's another just another piece of it. I get on a almost daily basis, or weekly basis at least, I get, that's called, um, I can't remember the name of it. It's a nationwide um, alert system, basically, where I get email from other agencies, and a lot of times it's a plot safety hit or it's an axon camera hit of a license plate of a vehicle that was involved in a homicide or a vehicle that was involved in an aggravated assault. Have you seen this vehicle? They only have that information because of these systems that are in place. And I, like I said, I get it from Stockton, I get it from Stanislaus County, you know, locally close. Um, now we have the ability to go, hey, let's run that license plate through our flock safety system, see if that vehicle has been up in our area, you know, if our officers had, had come across it. The problem, the only small problem that we have is that it's, it's only to the vehicles, you know, it's only our moving vehicles, so we're not catching a lot of um, the vehicle traffic coming in into our jurisdiction. Um, ideally, what I was planning on doing with some Homeland Security grant money, they wrote an app, uh, uh, grant for was to put um, ALPR readers at 4 and 49. Mm -hmm. So people coming into the county of these vehicles, and then that, then that just, that when we get a hit, you know, that's only for, it'll notify us if, if there's a hit um, on a vehicle coming through the area. Uh, but that's that's what I would like to do in, in the future, is have something there, just because that's, you know, that's one of the largest. You're not thinking of putting one of these four one of these four readers. No, these are in the vehicles. These are mounted, these are mounted the in the vehicles as part of the camera systems. He's talking about it. Do I have that grant for it? Yeah. Um, do any other, does Tuolumne County or Amador County? Sonora has them. Does Sonora PD does. Yeah. Right. Yeah. They're, they've got stationary cameras in there. I want to say they're downtown or something. Um, they don't have them in their vehicles at this point, um, but they've got them stationary at a couple locations. And then they've got, and the central down in, in the valley, and they're all over every city in Stanislaus County. I think has them. Okay. Hmm. Hmm. Okay, I'm gonna open it up real quick to public comment. We don't have a lot of public here, but if anybody has any questions or comments, seeing none, we'll bring it back for consideration. Um, no consideration. No, it's just, just discussion. discussion. We don't need to talk about the the policy that you have in place. Okay. All right. Thank you, Chief. Moving on to item E. This is to approve resolution 24-21, authorizing the city administrator to approve right of entry on city property for the fuels reduction project in alignment with the strategic plan goal conservation and open space. Rebecca. Okay, um, so about a year ago, the Fire Safe Council um, requested a support letter that Mayor Herdin um, signed. Um, it was uh, 
in preparation for them to apply for a fuels reduction project um, for grant funding through CAL FIRE. They were successful in getting that award and the fuels reduction um, project is specifically for mastication, scrub, that type of thing. Um, so uh, we got a call recently uh, from Fire Safe Council and said um, we're ready to move forward with the next phase, which would be um, demonstrating right of entry forms for each uh, parcel owner, and then they would do the environmental on it, and then they would be able to schedule the actual work. Um, so I'm just requesting uh, approval for me to go ahead and give them uh, approved access onto the properties. Uh, it's not every single property that the city has, but it's specific properties um, for them to uh, get that vegetation and do the mastication throughout there. Um, just kind of went through kind of what exactly they're doing in terms of pruning. Um, they're not doing clear cut. They're leaving the you know biggest, healthiest um, trees there um, and anything that is of danger or hazard then they're going to remove. Um, and then uh, I said, like I know our fire safe council does, and I'm sure many of you do, but I think there's a lot of people in the public that don't. Um, so um, we talked about working together to do kind of some public outreach just to get the public to be aware of this project, um, what the benefits of this project is to the city overall and their respective properties, and um, basically what Fire City Council does and the long-term benefits of the, of the program. So there's a map, um, basically at those big green swaths is what we're talking about. Um, so, uh, you know, around the water, uh, wastewater treat or the yeah uh, treatment plant down there on the lower right hand corner of the map, um, and then uh, kind of up in the uh, mid left corner, not all the way to the corner, that little green uh, swath up there is kind of like that boundary lane area. Um, up there. So um, all good things. They have um, contacted all of the property owners um, individually and they are getting those um, rights of entry forms created. Yeah, I, I just have, I, I support this. I think it will protect the city and the citizens. I'm just curious about liability. Um, that this is when the city authorizes, it's for the authorization for the uh, for the total project, or is it just for the property that the Our city property? So each right of entry is going to stipulate the responsibility, and um, there you know we would have to see insurance coverage um, or because uh, they're in a, a contractor or somebody that they're that is going to be doing the actual mastication. So that'll all be embodied on that right of entry form. So we've got, you know, um, uh, protections within there. So then each, each, and if it's 61 private, would have to sign those right of entry yeah. and, and agree to yeah. that. And, and within there, it's specifying the work that's being done. So, you know, if the work that, it specifies the work that's being done and you signed it, and they ended up like clear cutting your entire like oak grove, you you would have something to say about that. Um, because that is not what the scope of work was that was contained in that right of entry. Yeah. Uh, I think this is great. We did the same thing. Uh, you did that. Um, Again, a big mastication project coming up. It was through Pal Fire 2. Um, it gives five nice fire breaks if anything goes up or down the hill. Um, so I think it's one more. Questions? Public comment. Anyone have anything to say for the public? Okay, seeing none. Yeah, I'm also in support of this. I know the county's doing it. Like other, other entities are doing it. It just makes sense. It's what we have to do. So. Um, I am in full support of it, and I will actually make the motion to approve resolution twenty four two one. Second. Rose. Shemente. Aye. Rolio. Aye. Sherado. Aye. Herman. Aye. Thank you. Thank you. Item F. 
first is discussion about our complete streets, Rebecca. Okay, so complete streets, not to be confused with the mobility project, uh, but it will run into the mobility project, is really the whole pedestrian bicycle um, project. So that would be the bike lanes and the sidewalks that will run from Utica Park all the way up through uh, town to the north north side. Um, so we've been working with uh, Alan Lau, who's the project manager on that. Uh, it's been a kind of a collaborative effort. Um, things have gone to the planning commission um, in terms of uh, you know landscape. And we've been having meetings just to talk about various impacts um, that this project might have on maintenance with regards to public works. So we've got Aaron Versatori, um, our engineer in those meetings, Chris O'Flynn, um, Amy's in these meetings, I'm in these meetings, um, Alan Lau is in these meetings. So we're all kind of talking through the different components of this. Um, you know, from public work perspective, plant things that are extremely uh, maintenance free as much as you possibly can. Um, you know, Amy has been really good with her background in uh, biology uh, about native, making sure they're, you know, pushed to do native um, strains of, um, of plantings. Um, you know, anything that they're picking in terms of, uh, you know, does it, does it align with our existing plants? Um, so the color of the stamped concrete and the color of the, um, the little raised, you know, what are those things called, Amy? Safety ramps. Safety ramps. They have the little bubbles on them. Uh -huh. okay. Oh yeah. yeah. Shopping carts. Right. Yeah. Well, we don't want yellow things. ones mm -hmm. because those just don't good. go with our theme. So uh, they have found um, cast metal, but they're power coated brown, and so they look really, really nice. And they won't rust, and they um, they just kind of you know go <laughs> really well with everything. So. Um, that uh, project, the good news is they're they're getting through their kind of little fine details right now. And um, just to kind of give you an idea in exhibit A, if you go down right there, that is out of our um, downtown plan. Um, but that kind of shows you what, what it is. So it's kind of that tote stamped concrete um and then we would have um it doesn't really show it on here but we would have those brown um little uh raised yes. um and then uh so they're just finishing the acquisition strategy um the good news is um right before i finished gave this to rose there were two properties that were still outstanding um and before uh i you know, I reached out to Amy, Amy made some phone calls, um, tracked some people down, and now it's 100% um, participation. Wow. Okay. So uh, that's exciting. Um, and uh, so construction timeline, they're projecting completion, uh, or sorry, construction will start in spring, um, and they are, they're hoping to be done by fall of 2025. So um, the nice part is it will be something to happen before the mobility project. So kind of that beautification throughout the city. Um, they will also maintain all of the plantings for three years to make sure that when they hand it over to us, nothing is dead or dying. Um, if there's any, you know, irrigation issues or diseased um, plantings, they'll resolve that and take care of that. We also need sure that um, who's responsible, because once this is done, they, they're going to want to relinquish the sidewalks and the planters to the city. Um, so the three years gives us some time to figure out what, what we're going to do long term with the side, maintenance of the sidewalks and those planters, because we're talking about, um, you know, a mile of sidewalks and planters that weren't there before. Um, and, uh, the other thing is, uh, so what the county is doing, cause they're having their complete streets, um, project done in San Andreas, 
they are looking at forming like a community services district. Um, and theirs is specifically to the businesses that align with those practices. Um, so that could be something that we could talk talk about, but something that basically looks at a long term funding mechanism in order to maintain those sidewalks. Uh, Caltrans will also they will continue to do the curbs and gutters. Um, I did bring that up because it seems like street sweeping is not really happening very much throughout the city, um, and it's because all of their street sweepers keep breaking down. So. Um, that is, they're working on it. Um, Alan Lau will be at the meeting on Thursday. So um, he'll have a table if anyone wants to go by and talk about complete streets and what that means. Um, he worked really with every property owner. Um, you know, if a property owner was concerned about losing any parking frontage or, um, you know, anything like that, he, he did a really good job trying to work through those and amending the engineer plans um, to uh, find some compromise for every single property. So, um, and if you haven't watched the video, well, by now you should have, it was on the yeah. last one, yeah. but it's also online. Um, and really that video spans both projects, the Complete Streets and the Mobility Project. Rebecca, does Complete Streets include irrigation? But yes, it does. So they'll put the irrigation in, they'll put the plants in, um, yeah, the whole thing. They're going to put um, new lighting in. Um, uh, like like ambiance lighting? No, or like street lights. Street lights. Oh. Um, <laughs> they're going to put, um, there's going to be some railings specifically uh, along Utica Park. Okay. There. Um, so those were just kind of things, like you don't think about all that stuff, but we wanted to make sure it had you know, we didn't we didn't want anything that looks too modern or anything that was going to be difficult to maintain. So we worked through kind of you know black or brown or you know rust looking, but not really rust because we don't want it disintegrating. Um, so yeah, they've been really good. We've um, even talked about you know in some of the concrete maybe uh, like stamping the frog in it. We might be able to. I don't know, but uh, you know, if we if we if we we throw it out, we throw something out there that they might be willing to do since they're going to be there. Anyway. Thank you. So, Amy, um, are there going to be any trees planted in this? Yes. In the, so, are are they are they going to make are they going to put piping in and so the roots go down, not up, and and heave the concrete? I uh, mean, so you know, the problem with trees and sidewalks. We, we, we just dealt with or pick up trees that have consistent oh, right. right. sidewalks. So they're, yeah. they're doing that. like what embers. Yeah. Well, they're actually looking at pistache, um, okay. red bud, and we asked them not to include live oak because no, they look pretty scraggly. Because yeah, um, we can follow up on using um, the tree well. And I, I Garth. did have a very detailed conversation with Alan Lau, um, and I reminded him to take a walk downtown. Um, and I do not want the new sidewalks to look like that 10 to 15 years from now. Um, so, you know, I, I basically said I, we'd rather not have trees if that's if that's what's going to happen. So whatever trees get selected need to have a root system that's going to go down. When they get planted, they need to grow down. Um, but I don't want to see those sidewalks moving at all. Mm -hmm. When they're looking for water. Yep. Okay, public comment. Anybody? Seeing then. Um, any oh, other questions? Oh, one more. <laughs> one thing. It's in here. Um, it's it's the uh, wayfinding signage. So there is uh, within this project there are uh, uh, landmarks on, and they're just real simple signs that just have a list like sports complex with an arrow, you know, fairgrounds with an arrow, um, you know, city hall with an arrow, whatever. So uh, it didn't include the museum. So when all this first came about, the museum 
was where the museum was. The Visitors Bureau, I think, was downtown where the pickled porch is. City Hall was in the old location. Um, and so we've got to clean up some of that. Our thought is to still keep City Hall pointing to the old location. Um, but in the discussion on the list of landmarks was Greenhorn Creek and Rollmark. And um, in talking with that, Amy said that there was some comments and concerns about putting private businesses on the landmark signs waiting. Um, so I said I would bring that uh, to you guys for discussion and direction. Yeah, I think that could speak. Mm -hmm. I don't. I don't see how we could do for one that we wouldn't do for all. Exactly. So I, like, why wouldn't we do Project Plaza or? Yeah. Um, I think historic district is a good one, but yeah, I mean, can you just say golf? Course? Yeah, if you say public golf, 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 golf course, yeah, you know, like to mm -hmm. golf course, which we'll try public. public. Oh, it's a private, yeah. but you public can play though. Yeah, they, they yeah. but maybe just yeah, just golf, golf course, course or amenities or like a little fork spoon in the plate thing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so golf course. Um, we did think it was important to um say the museum. Yes, yes. Yeah. Um, and Martin's gonna ask. Yeah, so museum, um and we were thinking maybe museum slash visitors bureau, visitor uh, center, visitor center. Yeah. yeah, sure. Um was there anything else we that was missing? That no, I think that was it. But historic district here. Yeah, here. that's on. That's on. There. That's on there. It's, it's been a while since I saw that list. I know, huh? Yeah. Okay. Um. So I'll let him know to remove the golf course, uh, or the Greenhorn Creek specifically on Gold Park. Yeah. And you know, golf course, museum, visitor center, and historic district. Um, sports complex was on there like six thousand times. Yeah. Yeah. I saw I that. Too. I don't remember that. Right. I don't know why it was on there so many times. But because the pool was new. Right. This is pretty new. That's where it's pretty new. Yeah. Uh, but it was on there a lot. Yeah. It was. I remember so, that. Like why they really so maybe um maybe we put like, beautiful park on there instead like tennis meets. Yeah. I mean maybe. if you're saying sports complex. Track maybe the track meeting stuff, there's a lot of people. I mean, but I don't think we need it yeah. over six Fairgrounds. times. No. 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 No, 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 no. Um, so I was thinking, was Fairgrounds on there? Yeah. Okay. Um, but Big Me Tree was on there. I definitely feel like if you're coming up four or forty-nine, you need to know where the sports complex is. That's where out of towners are generally coming to come to a big meet. Right. I mean, you kind of maybe you follow those signs, but coming right. down the hill, I think you you don't know where that is. Should it, say, thinking of, should it say Brett Hart Sports Complex? I think you need to clarify because you have you have Capella Park that is a sports complex. You have Utica Park that could have events inevitably, or um, Brett Hart is clearly a sports complex, and then the fairgrounds has track meets. So I think you need to differentiate. If someone's having an event at the fairgrounds and it's the track meet, they're going to say at the fairgrounds. Yeah, they're going to know that. Gonna, yeah, I think you need well, to say, but they do have, have track meets at the or they're. Just, Cross country at the fairgrounds tracks, yeah. So that's the difference. They just need to differentiate. Yeah. I well, one would say the fairgrounds, and right. then the other one, right. cross country at the high school, um, is. We'll have to think about. I yeah, think sports, sports complex still makes sense because it's yeah. it's got quite a few amenities there. Like yeah. Things are due. Yeah, but like I said, AMA is building a sports complex mm -hmm. at the Pell Park. In the future, so they're fundraising, and it's going to be a another building. So I, you might muddy the water. Right. Cool. So we might have to think about that. <laughs> yeah. Right. Um, and then we could put you to go to put Tony Tyrell on there. Chi-Chi's first complex. Yeah. Um, okay, we'll kind of play around with that. I just know it was on there multiple times, so I almost wonder if some of those are for the AME one and some of them are for the Bell Park one, and they just didn't. Do I think that was too far along. Mm -hmm. yeah. and I, don't think mm -hmm. I think it was just an overkill on the fourth combo. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay. That gave me direction, so perfect. 
Okay, we're moving to item G. This is approval of resolution 2422, approving change order number one for McGuire Pacific Constructors in the amount of 14982 Rebecca. Um, okay, so this is for the, um, the road safety sign replacement project. Um, when staff in engineering and McGuire went out, they realized that the list of signs included um, 22 that are really Caltrans responsibility, so they shouldn't be in our project. But then they also identified um, some standards that, like, it, it, depending on, um, we've got city standards that are not in line with our, with the actual current standards. Our, our standards are from 2010, and mm -hmm. there's been signage standards that have changed in 2010. So, um, instead of following our outdated sign standards in our 2010 version, um, following the uh, actual state updated standards for signage. And specifically, these are safety signs. So if you're dealing with like a long um, road name, you wanted to make sure that the, uh, the size. size of the letters is appropriate. Because if we're going to limit it to a size of the sign, then the letters are going to get really small versus making the letter bigger. But then that means we have to have a bigger sign. So that changed the cost. So there were signs coming out, and then there was different types of signs going in that were still contemplated in the original project, but they were for smaller signs. Um, and then there were um, some... Uh, Dewberry did the design on this, right? It's not design. It was a um, it was a sign survey that was done by T back in 2019 that was looking at reflectivity and um, any other signs that failed um, safety standards. So they had identified the signs that needed to be replaced, and so that was the basis for this project. And then um, our engineer uh, worked with Chris and the contractor to kind of go through, because um, a lot of the signs are pretty you know, stop sign or a turn right, turn left. But then there were those kind of odd signs that they needed to determine what the appropriate standard was for those signs. So they, they based on that. The other thing, that I noticed, and this was a good point that um, one of you had brought up as well, is when projects are coming forward in, in this manner, um, it's not, we haven't been giving you all the costs for the project. We've been giving you the costs associated with like the RFP that we issued for the site replacement for construction. And the reality is we have to pay for construction management and, and inspection, and we have to pay for the engineering, and then there's the construction on top of that. So um, it's not just um, it's not just McGuire's costs. There are a lot of costs. And some of the you know engineering costs and, and some of those other costs, we contemplate in our budget anyway. So we've got line items in our budget for general city projects. But um, this is us kind of pulling some of that information out so you can see that it's tied to that particular project. So this is just for the construction portion? This is just the We're construction. We're in line with all the other budgeted mm -hmm. items? Yep. And this was above your signing threshold? Um, well, because it's an 80, it was originally an $84,980 contract, which is above my okay. But the HSIP and the RSTP funds will reimburse. Mm -hmm. It's still within the threshold mm -hmm. of that. So yeah. there's it's budget neutral technically. Yep. As long as there's no more change rules. Right. <laughs> In a perfect world. Um questions. Shimente? Yeah, I just um help me understand the scope of the project. Is it just all the stop signs, is it downtown? Is it going to go into subdivisions? Everywhere. Or? Everywhere. So um, it's 
everywhere. So what they did is they did every single sign that's in the city and about 50% of them failed safety standards. Okay. So it's, it's high reflectivity. It's, it's high reflectivity or, you know, the post is rotten or, um, what, or whatever it is. Damaged. It's damaged. Yeah. Um, and so, um, some are, uh, stop signs. Some are, uh, you know, uh, road names. Some are, uh, there's yeah. ones in Greenhorn Creek about like golf course crossing, um, you know, dead ends, you know, you name it, the sign is in there. But it was based on whatever its assessment was in 2019. Um, and there's been a handful of other signs that they identified as well that um, weren't included in the 2019. And maybe we just went south after 2019, but they were identified when they were going out and kind of doing that field survey to, to look at everything. Um, and so those were contemplated in here as well. So Rebecca, Habitat for Humanity, I'm assuming they're gonna have street signs. Are they, is it gonna be their, at their cost to install yes. those signs? And so from this point forward, we've established a new standard for the city and any new subdivision or et cetera, et cetera, will has have to, follow to, that. Has yep. to follow the standard. Yep. Yeah, so if you if you go out and drive around today, the si signs are all different. So some are white with black letters and some are green yeah. with white letters. Um, some yeah. have a frog and some don't have a frog. Right. So what you're gonna see, you know, is still 50% of our signs are not like all the other signs, but we're getting there. And so now we're establishing a standard that every single sign will look exactly like this. They're all going to have our frog logo on it. Um, the all exactly the same. So as the signs need to get changed, staff have the template for exactly what that standard is, and then we'll get we'll change them out as we need to. But then they will all be what they're going to be because they're all they're all over the place right now. Public comment. Anybody online anymore? Rose? Nope. Okay. Bringing it back to council. Does so anyone have any final comments or questions? I'll make a motion to approve that. <coughs> All second. Shimente. Aye. Rolio. Aye. Sharada. Aye. Herman. Aye. Thank you. Okay. Item H. This is. Um, Staff report for an update on our capital improvement projects and planning efforts. Rebecca. Okay, so some of this was included, I think most of this was included in the um, mid-year budget information, um, but there was um, talk about giving a, a little bit higher level information. And then um, I also wanted to get direction from council on the plans that we need to get updated. So we really want to contemplate the fact that we have outdated planning documents. So the North Angels plan, the downtown Main Street plan, um, the our trails plan, um, but COG was successful in um, getting a grant and a project for a full trail, countywide trails plan which will contemplate the city's um, trails as well. So that kind of takes care of that one. Um, the North Main Street plan, a lot of it is getting dealt with between the uh, complete streets and the mobility. So if you look at the North, uh, North Main Street plan, a lot of what was in there that was recommended to get done is all getting done or will be getting done in the next, what year is it? Uh, three years. Right. Um, between two and, you know, two and three years. So the last piece that we have that I would say is probably a real priority. And uh, I got a call from um, Melissa Reggio at Council of Governments. They have funding to uh, apply if we're interested 
in up, it's not enough to do a whole new plan, but we could update a plan. And I would highly recommend that we um, have them uh, choose, we submit for the downtown angels plan. That is the one where we just have not been getting any traction. Um, so you're gonna see a huge difference and you brought this up, um, Council Member Shimenti at the last meeting, like what happens after Utica? What what happens right, once you that. cross that line and you go down? Like what what's next? And the answer is nothing. So I think getting that downtown angels plan updated um, with some of the various components of other studies and plans that we have is a really good catalyst that we can work with Caltrans in order to kind of look at other projects going forward um, that we might be able to to get accomplished in that downtown area. But it's really important that we update that plan. Um, so I, I would make the recommendation that we provide that recommendation to Council of Governments. Um, they have some um, uh, funding available, like I said. Um, in terms of our current capital, just you know, things that we put in the budget, we had um, we originally had $6 million in general capital outlay, 2.5 in sewer, 2.1 in water, and equipment was about 430000 So the general fund, we reduced this year by 1.6, and that was because we paused the firehouse project because we identified that there was not sufficient money if we went out for that CDPG grant. So we halted that. Um, and then which direction we move on there is going to be determined on what happens with that uh, resiliency grant, right? The water capital projects, um, we reduced that by $2 million for this year. And the reason is because that was the water treatment plant improvements and we lost the funding for that entire project. So the state, um, had earmarked the funds for our project and at that point it was close to seven million dollars and it all got pulled um union public utility district they also had a project their funding was pulled and i've talked to some other agencies ccwd as well their funding was pulled so all of us kind of are in the same boat and um, I did submit this project. Um, I mentioned this uh, at the last meeting to um, Senator Alvarado Gill for her budget and her marking, and we'll see if that's um, successful. And then we'll just, can, if not, we'll just continue to try to find some sort of grant um, opportunity for that project. Um, and then, you know, I think what's important is that. Um, there is a volatile nature um, when we rely on external funding sources, but we have to rely on those external funding sources because we just don't have the base um, in terms of our, whether it's our rate payers or our, um, our residents to be able to afford that type of outlay without grant, um, grant opportunities. So um, we are meeting next or tomorrow, uh, engineering, uh, Chris and myself are all meeting to talk about the capital improvement program specifically as it pertains to water and sewer. So the last CIP that we had was a five year CIP. We really need to have a 10 year CIP. And then the five year would, would be what we contemplate in the, in the next rate study that's happening. And in addition, engineering is working on updating the water master plan and updating the wastewater master plan. And um, that's because there's just more knowns today than there were back in 2012 and 2013, which is when those were both done. Um, and then we are gonna also make sure that we're incorporating um, some, elements in our existing plans that just um, make those plans more um, in line with various granting agencies. So Vision Zero initiatives, disadvantaged communities, um, those type of elements. Um, we uh, need to update some, uh, some of our existing plans like I talked about. Um, our pavement assessment was done in 2019, but 
there's no data that came with it. It's a PDF report. Um, and so we really need the data. There weren't um, pictures of each segment. Um, and so we, we are working with a company to come in out and do that. And that's pretty affordable. The North Main Street plan, I'm not sure if it's gonna pencil out for us to update that because so much, like I said, so much is being done with that um, in the next few years. Uh, the Main Street plan, yes. Uh, what our master plan. The Angels Creek master plan and trail, um, I'm gonna talk to Cog, like I said, they are doing a full trail plan for the entire county inclusive of the city. And we'll see if um, that will kind of encompass that Angels Creek master plan or if they recommend us also updating that particular as well. And then the space needs assessment plan. Um, we talked about the subcommittee level, but that was done, uh, what did we determine, 2015? 20, yeah, yeah, I think it was like 2015, 2016. So it's fairly outdated, um, but uh, that's probably another one that we probably want to look at. Um, other plans that we need to get done is the Foundry Lane Master Plan. We did contemplate dollars in the budget to do something. We just weren't sure what that was going to be, but that's definitely going to be needed um, because we need to be able to plan out what is the infrastructure going to look like. So Foundry Lane has no utilities on it. There's nothing. It's just a big swath of empty property. So we need to contemplate um, uh, water and sewer and you know, road uh, access and the size of, uh, of all of that. Um, and then um, the Comprehensive Safety Action Plan, we're working on that in collaboration with Calgary's County, and that is the driver for the Mark Twain um, demo. And then we're also working on the evacuation plan that was in coordination with COG in Calaveras County. So it sounds like Calaveras County is going to work, uh, is going to be bringing um, the evacuation needs assessment to the Board of Supervisors here in the near future. And once that's done, um, Council of Governments is going to continue to try to identify grant funding for a countywide evacuation plan. But those are the types of plans that we utilize as the basis and the catalyst for capital improvement projects um, that would then go in line with various master plans or other plans that we have. Um, so, you know, in terms of, you know, kind of just thinking what are some uh, bottlenecks for our implementation and progress on capital plans, uh, we have limited staffing. We do not have full-time engineering personnel and I would say for the last several years, um, with regards to engineering, we've been fairly sleepy. Um, we have the Morgan's Grade Road Project, we're doing the sign project, but those aren't like big, heavy engineering lifts. This year has been a pretty big, heavy engineering lift. We have MACT, we have Habitat for Humanity. Um, we're asking them to update the water master plan, the wastewater master plan. We're asking them to be a lot more involved in, in planning than they have been for several years, um, but we still only get them for so much time, right? Um, and then we just uh, we just need to kind of prioritize and update, um, you know, this this information so we can uh, seek funding for you know kind of these critical projects. Um, if we lose funding, if it's um, if it's a competitive grant application, we need to make sure we have something in, in ready to go. More and more, any of the grants that we're looking at, they want shovel ready projects. They want the uh, an established plan, planning documents. They want the environmental done. They want the design documents at least thirty percent done. And so that takes a front heavy lift, right? So. Those are just things to contemplate. So tomorrow when we're meeting with our water sewer engineer and, um, and Chris O'Quinn, we're gonna talk about what do we need to start designing now so we can contemplate that for the remainder of this budget and then also contemplating what we need to incorporate in the next budget. A lot of that is gonna be design. Um, so 
the booster way. I mean, that has been going through design for, yeah, Where? and and environmental. Um, so it takes it takes a while to get it to that point before we even go think about construction. Um, and um, and then we'll just you know continue to kind of have these conversations. Um, you know, but I also look to you if you're, you know, if, if you're wanting to see something incorporated in our capital plan um, that's out there, I mean, definitely we want to have that conversation and incorporate that in, in the overall uh, program. Uh, but uh, just kind of give you, you know, where we're at in terms of our current general fund projects and current costs that we've incurred. Um, same thing with water and same thing with sewer. Questions? You go. Kevin, you're up. <laughs> um, I just have, I guess, questions. Um, what you just named off is absolutely huge. Napa Building 449, side project, boundary lane, safe action plan, evacuation plan. Um, Max, complete streets, road maintenance, Utica Park, daily routines, habitat, city hall, Angels Creek Trail, water sewer projects. So my question is, where are we, how how are you going to do these? Because that's not that's not possible. What? That is that's like a that's like a pipe dream getting done in the next ten years. So Max is happening, the, whether whether we like it or not, but it's happening. And habitat is happening no matter what. But we have projects to get them. Um, and we're working on those. And so we'll be meeting tomorrow because um, that habitat project has two significant components to it. One is the water line on old Highway 49, mm -hmm. and one is the sewer project. And part of that sewer project includes a, um, a lift station. And in the conditions, it talks about, you know, they'll construct it and then they will maintain it. Well, we don't want them maintaining uh, infrastructure. So, I mean, those are things that we'll have to constantly, in terms of making sure our standards make it clear, like once it's done, it gets um, it gets conveyed over to the city for ongoing maintenance. But booster, that RFP is gonna go out um, like this week. Um, and so that will be a, we're not going to, we're not constructing that. That will be a contractor that does that. And then okay. we will coordinate with, um, we have a contract with Dewberry that then runs with Unico. So Unico is a sub and Unico is who will do the, the contract, the construction management and the inspections. Okay. So Dewberry handles the engineering aspect of it. And then Aaron Brusatori handles the civil engineering components of any of those projects and helps us, you know, on that side, on the city side, Unico will handle the CM and the inspection. So we kind of have a really good separation so we don't have a pretty great road thing going on again. Um, and, but yes, so, I mean, we still have to have our hands on it we still have to have staff involved in this. Yeah. So that's why it's hugely important that we are fully staffed right. and that we have the, the right numbers of staffing and the right levels of staffing, which we're getting there, although we just lost an extra hire today. But anyhow, um, that is something that Chris and I are working really hard on to try to get him freed up enough and um, getting staff up to up to where they need to be, so they are not having to be as supervised. You know, I learn so that we can get out of the training mode, and we're still we're still straddling that training mode right now. So, with regard, can, can I jump on this? And I know you have others, but so with that project, with the booster project, we have we have Dewberry, and then we have the CM side coming Unico. on with Unico. Who is the city's contact that's going to be putting out the fires and getting fed the information? Is that Caitlin from planning? Is that Amy? Chris. Is that Chris? Okay, so he's the project manager from the city. 
he so yes okay. so he's the one who will be out there and we still have to take responsibility for um making sure that what we're anticipate like what is happening in the field is in line with what our expectations are because we're the ones who have to take it over right yeah. Yeah. yeah great so chris chris will be out there you know, driving by or being, he's not going to be there, you know, every day, eight hours no. day every day, but he's going to regularly be watching. He also, um, I make sure he is involved in the initial engineering conversations. So if the water or wastewater engineer is developing a design, Chris is sitting down and making sure that that's going to fit within what his expectation is once it's done. Um, so if he sees something on the front end in that design phase, uh, he can point it out. So we don't get to the point of construction and then he's coming on it to say there's a problem. Um, but the design should be done. We're going out and you're putting the art this done. week. Right. Yeah. So he so should have already had, you already had eyes on all that. Okay. Yeah. And I, I get having okay. stuff shovel ready and, and ready to go. Um, because that's how, I mean, you have to be 10, but there's just a lot. And I don't think you can ask, I don't know. There's, this is a heavy, humongous lift. Uh, um, yeah. I, I, I mean, we're going to hire Weber Geo and engineer. a bunch of other engineers out, and yeah, we're just going to have project sure. managers because we just got done hearing from Chris that he doesn't have the staffing to even go cover vacations. So I'm just worried. I, I'm just, so I think this is great. We need the CIP yeah. plan. So, yeah. So some of these are, we just have to have the plans updated, right? right? We're not. And, and historically, those plans have been developed by consultants, right? Mm -hmm. And we have input on them. Right. And there's an outreach element, and staff are going to have input on it. But it's not going to equate to a construction project this year, next year, the following year. But if we don't have it, we're gonna miss right. the opportunity. Have the plan ready. You, you yeah. So sure. a lot of yeah. so I would say a lot of this is we need to get these plans under our belt because we're we're missing out on oh, on man. what's gonna happen three four years from now. Right. Well, look at the wayfinding. I mean, that was just sitting on a shelf and they grabbed it and it got picked up. The right. downtown um, plans are because those were done. Like ten years ago, maybe more. Are the can those just be updated? Yes. Okay. They just need to be updated. They don't need to be re fully redone. But there's things in it that weren't contemplated back when it was done. So you know, Chris and I look at it now and we're like, mm, the, this probably needs to be addressed or that this needs to be added. Um, and then the Angels Creek, we're still in in environmental. Right. Well, right. right. cultural, right. 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 and then we so will have right. we will have twelve plus months in right of way. Mm -hmm. So we won't even enter into a construction phase until the twenty five twenty six construction period. Right. Yeah. Um. So you know, in terms of what what's next, the the projects that we need to start contemplating for like the next year, next fiscal year. We need to address um, the downtown water and wastewater lines. Mm -hmm. That has to be done. Um, and since we would do that, we want to also address the storm drains or lack thereof because mm -hmm. there aren't any. Um, since you're going to dig it up anyway, you may as well go go ahead and rip it off. Um, and that was contemplated in the CIP, but. It's just been trying to get to the point of doing that. So our recommendation would be working with engineering and getting that design ready to go so that we could put it out for a bid, you know, next fiscal year at some point. Um, that's a big one. Um, and then we have just like I and I projects um, and you know, various projects like that. But this year is going to carry over to next year. But um, yeah, it's it's a lot. We have a lot going on right now. And some of that is just not controlled by us. Those are those are other projects that are mm -hmm. that we're along for the ride. So Tom or Rebecca, uh, 
Are there opportunities for cities to enter into COPs, certificates of participation? Mm -hmm. So that, that's a that could be a funding mechanism. Mm -hmm. Potentially. Potentially. And the enterprise fund generates dollars every year. Mm -hmm. So instead of looking at grant dollars, we could use the dollars that we're collecting to pay off the, the certificates over a 30 year period yeah. or 20 year Is that period. Like a loan or it's, it's, it's a it's a loan. It's a it's a it's a lease kind of. Uh, you're basically leasing your properties. It, mm -hmm. It's a you're you're using your properties as leverage. Um, and then if grants came available, I mean, I it's, um, it's, it's just pay it back. yeah, it's a, it's yeah. a, it's another funding source to do so, that. As part of the rate study that we're doing, we are going to work with Bartles and Wells to contemplate debt service, um, because we don't mm -hmm. have, we don't, you know, like if if we can't find any funding for the water treatment plant and it has to be done. That isn't something we well, can fight off. Well, it's not like calling somebody a bad name. No. I mean, it, it's 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 a thing that's used on a regular basis to fund projects, yeah. especially if you have a an income source to offset that. Um, the second thing is, and and I, I think we keep dancing around it, and I know Michelle is working very hard, but you know, I, I we need to fully fund. Chris's department, and I think that needs to be included in the budget. And I know that you folks are going to be entering into negotiations, um, but you know, as you start to negotiate and look at the pots of dollars available for our employees, uh, we need to look at. Uh, I believe, you know, funding Chris to the to full potential, and because safety is part of our mission statement, look at hiring another fire person so that when we arrive on a fire scene, we at least we can do something. So. Um, and I'm, I'm, I don't mean to be bird walking, but, you know, I, I think what we hear all the time is we don't have the bandwidth and we don't have that. And especially with the enterprise fund, you know, I get people telling me how much the water and sewer bills are, you know, and I keep saying, but, you know, there's going to be projects and, you know, we got a utilization and they go, yeah, right, Mike. Um, so I, I, I would like us to really seriously consider, you know, funding those, um, and looking at funding sources so that people can see shovels in the ground. You know, I um, that's that's important. That that's important. Yep. So. I agree. Um, and, and let me ask another question. Um, Gio Weber used to be our city engineers. Um, I, I remember a long time ago when I was we would I would deal with them. Uh, you know, if there was a project. Anyway, long story short. Um, so now we just rely on those other engineers and, and no local engineers on projects and things. Um, so we did an RP for for uh, engineering and it's 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 all engineering. So we needed a uh, we needed a civil engineer. We needed water engineering. We needed wastewater engineering. Um, and then uh, the only and we we put it out there and we invited Weber right. Gale. We invited they you know everybody and they didn't propose. So they get picked up as a subcontractor under Dewberry oftentimes. It just is like this. They, they, they were we, under under Dewberry as yeah. a sub. So they just chose not to apply. They chose not to apply. But what I would say is <clears throat> we also have um how we developed the budget is you know we just we put okay. This is the amount for engineering that right. we put in for last right. year for water, and this much for sewer, and this much for the general fund. And what I would say is, we need to put in a whole lot more money for engineering because there's a whole lot more going on. Um, and so, don't like have sticker shock, but. The, the budget is going to have to have more engineering dollars um, just because that I, I'm I can't yell mm -hmm. at him I can't I mean it's one one person for water and wastewater um, and so I need I need more hours in order to to get some of these projects done and in though in some of those cases it's not public works I mean public works it, like Chris is like dying he wants to get a project done so bad but we're waiting on engineering 
Um, and engineering can only get to so much because they're working on the design for habitat on their water line or their sewer project or they're dealing with MAC. Um, and we're, you know, we don't want to tell MACT and Habitat, well, you got to wait because we had to deal with our own projects. So we're straddling, you know, public and private projects. Um, so we are going to have to expand our, our costs in the engineering realm. Um, we definitely need help for public work so that they have the bandwidth to actually do, do some of this work. Um, but we are getting little wins. So we are, um, we are going to be bringing forward, I think, at the next meeting, um, uh, the, uh, basically like a project charter for the AMR um, because we've identified a vendor, we've identified a pathway forward, and, um, and so that, that will, as we start replacing those meters, that's going to free up some of Exactly. Staff. I was talking to the guy today about that. Yeah. As you were reading my meter. <laughs> we're really close right? to be able to, do to, yeah. to be able to start doing that. So um so they're excited about that. But those are the types of projects that have been sitting for a really long time. And so we're we're pushing to get those things done. Okay, I think we're gonna take a quick break and then we'll come back to item seven I. So just uh sure. five minutes, please. Sure. All right, okay, we are going to move on to item I, which is appoint a new council member to serve on the infrastructure slash facilities subcommittee road. So staff has been informed that Vice Mayor Moncada needs to step down from the infrastructure facility subcommittee. Uh, council approved the subcommittee policy January 2nd. And within that policy, council by majority is the governing board that or council that will appoint somebody to serve on a subcommittee. So I'm looking for an appointment to replace Vice Mayor Moncada. I appoint Shemini. So my first thought <laughs> would be to flip flop Shemini and Moncada. My fear of the alternate, right? Yeah, right. So if are you capable of sliding in as the as the Am I capable? Are you willing? <laughs> I know you're capable. Are you willing? Yes. Are, your time is are yes. you are you yes. So that would be my first thought is to switch those two. So just yep. which Moncada and Shemente? the alternate. Shemente? Okay. And keep Sherada the alternate. No, I no. was never. Uh, no, no, I am the alternate. Moncada. My Sherada. We're talking about the yeah, infrastructure. Let me look at the list. So I don't. So I'm sorry, so, Mike, you weren't the alternate. No. no. I no, apologize. He's the alternate I on apologize. the finance budget. Okay, no. take, my, take mine out. No, I think it still should be Shemente and Moncada as the, the backup. Yeah. And you no longer is the backup mm -hmm. on that one? No. Nope. You're on the other one with me, huh? Right. There's yeah. no reason why she could maybe be the backup. For sure. Yeah. Okay, real quick public comment on this, opening it up just so we have said we've tried and I see nobody. Um, but that would be my recommendation if you so, guys I'll make a motion. Thank you. To make Shemente the full time and Moncada the ultimate. I'll second. Shemente? Can I vote no? Nope. Can you I can vote no, but you need not vote <laughs> You can do whatever you want, buddy. All right. <laughs> Rolio? Aye. Sharana? Aye. Herman? Aye. Thank you. Thank you. And they're 8 o'clock. Right, Rose? 8 o'clock. Every other Monday. Okay. Administration report. Uh, oh, that's me. Sorry. <laughs> Sorry about that. Um, what? oh, I put that in the wrong spot. So, we'll oh, I thought it was on there for this session. No, but that's fine. Um, okay. Well, uh, we're having the meeting tomorrow, um, at the Bret Hart, um, multi-purpose no. room. What? Not tomorrow, Thursday. Thursday. Sorry. Correct. I just carved out Wednesday. It's not on I'm like, I've got cons for this, so there's Thursday. no way. Um, and so I will be setting up a table, um, just to the, the come yell at Rebecca table. Um, although there's just a lot of comments that I'm seeing social media wise that have nothing to do with Caltrans. And so, um, I will be there. Um, it sounds like Crystal Flynn will be there as well. Um, just to answer any of those questions that really 
they're, it's not, they're not questions that Caltrans is going to be able to answer because they're not. Yeah, that's not fair for Caltrans. They, they don't have home. anything to do with Caltrans. Mm -hmm. So, um, so I will be there. Um, and South like Chris will be there as well. Um, also, like I said, Alan Lau will be there um, for Complete Streets, which also is a mobility project. Um, mm -hmm. We'll be there. Um, Corey uh, Casey has been doing this for a while. He, uh, it's, it seems like it's pretty common that um, people initially really don't like roundabouts and they're they're very angsty about them. So he's used to that response. So um, he's a pretty good level uh, person. So um, he should do fine. Um, we are. Can, can you clarify? Is there's not going to be any presentation. No. It's just going to be just a swing in, a, a drop in, come in, ask some questions. Come in. So, so when you he, have a question, when he came and met with us at our last meeting, we told we had some questions, and he said he'd be bringing those back to us at this meeting, at at the Thursday meeting. He will have those answers for you. So we well, just need to check back. We have to check in with him. Then. Okay. Yeah. Will right. he have his simulation going on as a? Um, I'm not sure how they know. set it up over there. We recommended that yeah. he did. Yeah. I mean, yeah. we really recommend it. But yeah, I'm sure yeah. it's got the ability to yeah. 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 logging <laughs> Yeah. Um, so operations will have that. So operations is going to be there to demonstrate, like, you know, what the truck uh, radius and that information. Um, traffic safety will be there. Um, Corey will be there. Okay. Um, we are, um, it's the downtown angels uh, plan that was my recommendation. So um, I was going to let Todd know about that. Um, I am working with uh, Badger. So I'm going to be bringing that forward to the next um, council meeting for AMR, the AMR project um, and what that looks like. Uh, I did have a really good, um, sit down with uh, the applicant for the Utica Hotel. Um, so we will be having staff working with them um, on trying to identify the, the first inspection because we haven't had an inspection down there yet. Um, he said that he should have an inspection, his first inspection before June. Um, so that's good. And um, I did offer, because we have the mapped project on our website, we have Habitat for Humanity on our website, and those aren't our projects, but we get a lot of questions about them. Um, I did offer that we could certainly put his project on our website, since, again, that's one of those kind of high-profile projects, um, just to give people a, you know, we're in rough framing phase or, you know, whatever. Um, so he's going he's gonna to think about that. Um, I did meet with uh, Utica and UPUD on the Utica financial review. So they made the selection of HDR to, as the consultant to work on that financial review. Um, they're putting a model together. Um, so the model is kind of an interactive model, so it can toggle. Um, we thought that was important because let's say he picks a lot of your three and that makes the cost be 700,000, you know, you might want it to be a water year two to make it go down to 300,000, whatever. Um, so it is gonna have that ability to kind of toggle. Um, unfortunately, it looks like we're not gonna get any information that we can actually present to council or the union uh, board until April at the earliest. And so that will probably be the last item for the rate study. So um, we will not be able to bring forward a draft rate study until we get that last component because that's a pretty significant component of the rate. Um, we talked about the complete streets with the types of landscaping trees. Um, uh, we also, as uh, since since Alan, since we were on the phone call with Alan, um, he has an in for traffic ops, and we have those radar speed signs, the the the, the speed signs. How fast are you going? How fast are you going? Mm -hmm. um, that blink that um, we've been having a heck of a time trying to get encroachment approval on 49. 
And so he, uh, we gave him the information for that so we could get that um, in front of traffic ops. So I think we'll get that approved. There were two uh, points on 49. One was coming into uh, the north side of Angels, and one was right before you drop down into downtown. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, which are our two uh, problem, problem areas. Yeah. Um, and we are. Um, I'm also working with the Department of Transportation in getting um, an extension date for the um, the the project end date on the Angels Creek Trail as it pertains to the um, the right of way phase. Um, since that has that's been delayed on the cultural component of it, and then um, I'm also working with Council of Governments. It sounds like uh, Calaveras County is moving faster on their Valley Spring Schools project than they had anticipated. And so they need an advance for CMAC, and we have CMAC that we don't want to lose. So um, I think what we're um, recommending is to exchange our CMAC to the county, and then the county will give us their CMAC when it aligns with our um, construction period, which now, because of the delay, will probably be 25, 26. Um, so we're working with Council of Governments on that. Um, so you will probably be seeing that in the group on the hog. And that um, I'm going to be putting the booster RFP out um, here shortly. Um, did meet with uh, the Yummy Haha -ha folks, and I think that we have identified a path for them to comply with fire safety. Um, so kind of a group group effort, but um, I think we have a solution for that one. And then uh, last year, actually the last couple of years, Utica has put a booth at the fair to um, just kind of water in our area. So um, we've had the city present, um, Utica, Union Public Utility District and CCW, oh. and I'm we're just putting out if anyone wants to take any time slots at the fair to sit at the table to talk to people that have questions. I think it potentially would be a good idea because we have the rate study that is going to be coming out, so it's a good opportunity <laughs> to get that information out there as well. So. Um, I'll be uh, talking to staff, but if any of you as council want to hang out at a table, fair. I'll take a shin. You will? Yeah. Well, you, you guys kind of live out there anyway. Yeah. It's like a full time job. So just uh, just let me know if anyone. Any day, but Sunday. Oh. No Sunday. No Sunday. Right. Um, so would it be just general questions or questions about <laughs> water and rates and all this be everything? Yes. They Can could ask me about the tourism. Yeah, we'll have a little, little handout. Yeah. yeah, we'll have a little handout there. Sharpen your pencil. I'm sure I can fill in a spot. I just yeah, don't I mean, I, I wouldn't mind. And if the pancake breakfast is happening, I can't do it at that point. But. Yeah. Yeah. Um, okay, and I think... That is it. Um, I did send out the um, the business uh, newsletter, and I did send out the the general newsletter. Um, again, I've gotten very positive feedback on all of them. And then I just released today. I um, put some stats together for the Hop and Shop program, and just sent that out. We still have, I think it's fifteen. I don't know, can't remember the number, 20,000 maybe, um, that we can do another round for this fiscal year. So I'll be um, reaching out to ACTA to see when um, they would recommend to put that out. But it's been a very, very successful program. So we put that information out for the businesses and hoping that we can get some more businesses that want to participate in that. And I don't Oh, and then we do have um, an employee appreciation on Thursday, the 14th. Do we know? Uh, 1130 to 2, I believe. I just said it all. 
Yeah. Oh, here. Yeah. There. 11 to 2 here on the 13th. Oh, 14. 14. Hi, Dave. We're doing pizza and pie. <laughs> That's a Thursday. Thursday, yes. Thursday. Thursday. Uh, 11, okay. Okay. Busy day. Yes. Uh, the 14th. The 14th. 14th. Yeah, the 14th. It's a busy day. Don't let me hear. No. I'm sorry. That's okay. Can do the morning at that old yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, oh, and then uh, we, I did, uh, some of you reached out to me for some graffiti at the Napa building that was all addressed um, along the whole way. And then we just have a almost visual. Mm -hmm. but... And we are moving forward trying to get a bid. I saw an yeah, uh, earlier yeah. agenda item. Yeah, so we are, um, I'm going to have to reach out. So the, the ones that have responded have said they want uh, in, like a report on the building before we demo. So we'll have to get a report. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, so I'm going to work on that. And what about the new parking next to? Um, that contract is under review by the sellers. Um, by their attorneys, and then we're waiting to go into. Oh, okay. Group. Okay, so we haven't entered this group yet. But okay. they they have a contract. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Anything else? Item nine is council report. Um, you start, Jen. Thank you, Mike. Thank you. You're welcome. Um. Let's see here. Since our last meeting um, on the 22nd, we met the Finance Committee. Um, we met and discussed um, water tampering, water meter tampering, and water theft with our agendized item. Um, on the 1st, I attended the ribbon cutting for Re Boutique on Main, the active ribbon cutting. It was well attended. It was a blustery, oh. miserable day, but um, excited to have a new business in town. And that's all I have to report. Ms. Chirot. Uh, the finance subcommittee, I attended that as well. And then you all heard about my trip to DC. So that's all I have. Um, I missed the last meeting. Um, you, you were the <laughs> Um, I also found in my other box is the February 15th percent of Sierra. So I missed that. I just found that a week or so ago. Okay. So <laughs> I've, now, I've now kicked that back into where it should be. Um, so I missed that one. Um, also doing um, infrastructure. Um, so we went over parking and all sorts of fun stuff. A lot of, a lot of parking and mobility around town. Mm -hmm. So. I, uh, well, along with Jen, we were at, was at the grand opening. I thought it was wonderful to see that. You know, every new business uh, not only uh, enhances those folks, and we wish them the best, but everyone else, because it draws more people downtown. So uh, we're excited to see that. I'm excited to see them. Oh, my God, a twin. <clears throat> okay. Calendar, Rose. Calendar is up there for you. Um, Shemente, the 11th is the infrastructure facilities. At 8? He, at 8 here. Oh, at, here at the firehouse? Uh -huh. Do they have coffee? Yeah, that's enough. Good. And they have all hazards the next day. <laughs> Yay! <laughs> back to back. Uh, like, uh. And we have council and COG right back. Yeah, yeah we have what's the 20th? What's that? Cog, Cog and uh, is the tax meeting? City administrator, county administrator. Oh, I don't go to that. It's vice chair and chair. Okay, good. That's great. No, yeah, that's great. Right. Yeah. I mean, three nights this week is enough, so. See you tomorrow. Yeah. Are you going to? And this one is okay, at right. four. I put 3.30 because right. it's set up. Are we, so. are, are we as council members expected to be there all four hours or do should no, we just come in just and drop, drop in, in, ask our questions? Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Hmm. Um, the IRWMA, that one is going to be interesting. Um, the state has changed, the governor has changed um, the whole watershed funding 
watershed grant, everything. So um, they're still trying to figure out exactly how that's going to impact them. Um, but stay tuned. All right. I don't, I don't, it's not a, it's not a positive thing. thing. It's not looking positive. No. You know, under council report, I, I had a, someone come up to me and uh, say that their water bill had increased by $50 and they had called the city. And Andrea, um, th th this person was very impressed with her. And, oh, and, and actually, she said, you know, I noticed and I was going to reach out, maybe have your meter reread. And so that was was very cool. And so I, I appreciate staff. And if he could just pass that along, that was that was well done. Well, good. That's what I like to hear. Kind and helpful. <laughs> yeah. Your age, <laughs> I don't have to have them yet. Oh, OK. OK, we have <laughs> correspondence. We received one letter here from uh, ACBA. Um, from Marilyn Smith. That was nice about the Aqua Parade. So thank you for that. Any other correspondence? No. Okay. Item 12, future agenda. I, I have maybe two. Uh, in doing some, I, I was uh, asked about uh, someone's water rates, and so I, I talked, started with Rose, and then I went to Michelle, and then Rebecca, and um, and that, I, that problem, I think, has been solved. But in those discussions, uh, we started talking about business rates. And there are, there are two restaurants in town that are charged more money per month than any other restaurant. And um, I'm not, and I, I don't think there's anything we can do this year, and maybe it will be corrected with the rate study, but the Far East and La Hacienda are paying around $700 a month. Uh, and that's more than McDonald's and Roundtable, and I'm not saying they should be paying that. But I, I, I started in my mind, started to think about, you know, who determines what the rates are. I mean, is it? Uh, and when I looked in our in the handbook that I received, you know, it, it didn't talk about square footage, and we talked about volumetric. Uh, but I just think we need to be consistent. And you know, if the rate study, my question to you and maybe to Tom is. Um, starting with the new fiscal year, is there some way that that can be adjusted? And so that we're being more consistent with our businesses yeah. as opposed to, you know, like we're being- I thought it went off a meter size. Yeah, like, well, it's, are they paying, oh, I was like, are they paying the same per meter? Cause like someone- So it's not for water, it's for sewer. Oh. Um, so yes, so we need to talk about that in terms of potential changes that we need to make in the actual um, implementation of this next rate study. Um, it, we're trying to get to the bottom of why, I mean, volumetric uh, rate is mentioned in the rate study, but it doesn't really talk about how it's going to be determined who, who gets it and how it's going to be implemented. Um, and so I've talked to engineering, I have brought a lot of looking into it, um, but I, I think we just need to do it differently um, and have that conversation in terms of exactly how we want to do it. I think the concept of volumetric um, rate it makes sense, um, but it just needs to be applied um, at the board, yeah. across the board yeah. to all of the particular uh, industries that, I mean, the point of doing it is you're, you're trying to um, a, address those industries that um, burden the sewer system more than others. Yeah. Right? And so um, that's the basis, yeah. but um, I think we just need to have that conversation in terms of what the what the appropriate way of doing that you is. You know, it's not, in my mind, it's not about being punitive no. or raise everyone else's rates. Mm -hmm. It's about just being consistent, yeah. mm -hmm. you know, yeah. and especially when, you have mom and pop restaurants who are trying or struggling to just to, to stay open. The last rate case there was all sorts of fun stuff in there. Yeah. Yeah. And then the other thing I have, Rebecca, is I, I just like to know, I mean, you kind of touched upon it. Um, the whole planning and billing department, you reached out to contractors and things. And, you know, I appreciate the letter from Marilyn Smith because she's patting us on the back. But typically you don't see people patting you on the back. You see people 
busting mm -hmm. your chops. And mm -hmm. um, I, I just, in my mind, I, I don't have a clear picture of what happens when the permitting process starts. You know, what role does Caitlin play in it? What role does our, you know, uh, consultants play in it? And, you know, kind of where do you fit into that picture? Um, mediator. But, yeah. <laughs> I would hope as mediator, I'm not as, you know, final decision maker or anything like that. So, um, and I know, no, I mean, and, you know, sitting in a, all hazards, you know, we're trying to put together, you know, packets for people. So it seems like some projects are fairly routine, whether or not, you know, the person likes what they hear. When you're putting a new roof on, here's your packet. This is what you need to comply with. You know, call us for an inspection after you tear off, da 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 da, and then call us for a final. It seems that's the majority. It just seems to be. But no, I. That's the reason why I got on the subcommittee that I did is because I wanted to try to make as much change and improvement in the not the uh, the procedure, the policy, um, and yeah, I agree with Mike. I I think. For you to be able to empower staff, Caitlin and, and all staff to to handle the problematic, it seems like you tend to get involved quite a lot with a lot of the mitigation. When, when we get to the point where that there's uh, where it's it boiling over, then I get called in because I have to play mediator between a building official. The plan, you know, he's got to deal with his plan review side, the building inspectors. I'm trying to calm down the contractor or the architect or the draftsman. Um, Caitlin has shared all the information. Nobody likes the answer. Everyone's finger pointing at one another. Um, and then when it gets to the point of we're just going to cancel our permit, we're pulling out and we don't want to do it anymore. Yeah that's not okay and at that point that's beyond csg dealing with it that's beyond caitlin dealing with it that's me having to get involved to figure out where exactly did it go off the rails um and so we're using those as learning opportunities yeah so Is that working that, yeah Good. And so, you know, if, if there's education, then Caitlin is updating the procedures or she's updating yeah. the um, education or updating the packet or um, working with iWork to update the web form so it's clear when they submit a business license or they submit a permit or whatever it is. Um, but I'm in and I'm out. So all I'm doing is basically coming in and playing referee to get everybody to play nice and kind of reset, um, kind of re, you know, we're not, we're here to work together. Um, and then staff will, will take it from there. But I'm, I'm just there as a... So I don't know anything about any of this that you're talking about. And it feels like this, we were supposed to be talking about future agenda items. Right. Well, I, I want this to be... Yeah, it, but it's gone into a discussion. Right, but I'd like it to be, <laughs> I, I would like this to be an agenda item. Just, yeah. Because I, I want to see... Um, procedures, right? Yes. Yeah, from start to yeah. finish, mm -hmm. you know, a yeah. chain Sorry, of Sorry, but I just no, felt like no, this no, 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 I, I just, I just so. want to see, that's, you know, chain of command, you know. <laughs> just, I have no idea what you're talking about. Yeah. So. Well, I, I mean, it, it, it just, <clears throat> just because I, I can say because I'm the newbie, but I, I would just like to see um, the process. Like a, a planning to building workflow. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. You know, this who's in charge and, and level of what I don't know what Caitlin does. And so what is her role in, in this and, and and our consultants and what is their role? And so you know you pull up a, an app you pull a permit, what's the typical process? Yep. And and I think, you know, and we can talk about this, but I think the tough part, you know, Jen, we don't have a building official here at the city We don't have an engineer. Yeah. Huh? We don't have, you know, we need to have two days a week. And she's the planner. And there's like no not, fine line. She's not in charge of all everything yeah. that happens in building and planning. So um, we don't have a department head over that. So that's that's the level that we lost when we stopped. Well, I think that would be a part of the conversation that we have yeah. with this item. Okay. And then I I do have a, a request, and I, you touched on it a minute ago, 
but I do, I've seen more and more and more graffiti around town. We mentioned it at our, um, at our subcommittee meeting. A lot of them are on the street signs. A lot of them are the same. Um, I, you know, I don't know what it means. I, it, I can't read the word. I don't know if it's somebody's name. I don't know. It seems like it's like calligraphy or something. I don't know if it's gang related. I don't know, but I'd like to know what we can and should do to be do we have a policy to, to investigate no that? I know, we don't have a policy. But it's do we it's clean it's it? Do we replace it? Do we call the, is it a right away? Is it property owner? I don't know. But I think we need to get ahead of it because I've seen a lot of one it's, specific tag. It's too bad Scott left because. I know, I was going to ask him. He would be a good resource. You know, Some I, of it I could have, be a communication, like a gang related. Bring back the na neighborhood watch program. There you go. So, yeah, so I don't know um, if that's worth talking about. So, you can get a friend. Um, I had one, I just didn't know when union negotiations were going to start coming. Um, I just I just got the letter from the OD3 rep. Um, he's out of the office until March 20 something, so it will be. Um, April. Okay. Closed session. Um, I need to get together with Deb yeah. uh, to do that, and then we would bring in a closed session and have a conversation with me. Okay. Okay. How many have any? Nope. Okay. Seeing none, I'm looking for an adjournment. Motion for adjournment. So moved. We got it. We got it. One and a two. Shamente. Aye. Brolio. Aye. Corrado. Aye. Thank you. Thank you.